So Juan, we're here. We're going to talk about bananas today and the impact that the proposed plastics ban is going to have on bananas, which are the number one consumed fruit in Canada. And we talk about importing two thirds of our fresh produce into this country. Of course, bananas is something that we do not grow in Canada. So can you explain for people who are watching here today why plastic is so important to bananas when we're talking about shipping them long distances? What is the role of plastic in keeping bananas fresh? What does it do for bananas before the consumer ever sees bananas on the shelf out like this in the grocery store? Yeah, so, so the plastic plays a role because it protects the fruit when it's transported. So usually a banana is cut and put it in a container and then the container travels maybe, let's say, two weeks. Right, one week, two weeks into any market or, or port. By ship. It by goes ship, by yeah, ship in a from container line, yeah. South America. Yeah, South instance, America, right? be Ecuador, Costa Rica, Colombia, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Mexico, whatever it is. So, so the fruit is transported in a container, then it's discharged in a port, and then it's put in a truck, and the truck is taken into into whatever facility it is, either in Canada or in the US, wherever the it is. The grocery store distribution centers before yes. it gets sent out to the grocery stores So here then in it needs to be ripened, and then after ripening, it's taken to the store. The plastic then... protects the bananas while it's in the box because during shipping, they're going to move a lot because there, yes. there's friction from the cardboard touching the banana. And when you showed us this right here, it's basically like a bruise on the yes. banana because there's nothing to protect the banana from the friction of the box. So if we take away that plastic, you're going to see all the bananas like this, mm -hmm. and they're going to rot faster, yes. right? Yes. And also consumers don't want to buy something that looks like this. They would prefer to buy something that doesn't have any marks on it because they think because it is going to go bad faster. So Correct. we're talking about food waste, excess food waste as well. Even though it's perfectly good to eat, it's, yes. it's just consumers want to buy with their eyes and they want things to look perfect. Actually, even this fruit that you see here, when you peel it, it's going to be black in this side. On the inside. Yeah, on so the inside as well. It's going to be pure uh, food waste. No. Yeah, there are solutions. You can you can have compostable plastic and things like that. But what happens? You need to understand this coming from tropics in areas that they are very hot. And when you have either you have recyclable, uh, compostable, so you need to make sure that the that the product is going to last enough throughout the whole supply chain because of color, because of uh, because of uh, the heat, the heat, the humidity, and, uh, and also handling as well. As handling. But I think. The industry in general, the produce industry, is not prepared yet to, with a good solution, to be able to help the environment and actually not having food waste. Now, there is a lot of things that we do from the industry perspective to, right. to protect the environment. The industry is getting is moving towards trying to find alternatives to plastic of right course. now, but on a global scale, there isn't another product available worldwide that will do the same function, have the same functionality as what we have right now and be able to hold up to, like you said, heat and humidity yes. in the tropics yes. when we're trying to ship fruit from the tropics to other parts of the world. Correct. So we're talking about these these PLU stickers that you'll see on all fruits and vegetables that yeah. are out on the shelf in bulk, especially. And so let's talk a little bit about um, what the impact of changing these over to a, a compostable sticker is, not just cost, but functionality and the repercussions of that. Yeah, so... so there are solutions that they are they are compostable. The question is, there are several kinds of compostable: the industrial one and home base and everything. The second thing is that you need to put glue to right. be able to stick the fruit. Once you put the glue, they are not necessarily compostable. So right. again, are, are we solving the problem or not? So you could have a compostable piece of paper, but without the glue to stick it on there, it's useless. Yeah. Is yes. what you're saying? Yes. And also, let's talk about cost when we talk about changing over from a traditional PLU sticker to what the government wants us to change over to compostable, what is the cost factor and what's that going to mean to the overall the price of the fruit? The solutions that are available today, they are about two or three times more the normal cost that you have for this little piece of paper. And they are, again, as I, as I was saying, there are other solutions for this, but it also costs more money. But at the end of the day, it's going to cost consumers more money because it's costing you as, as an importer or a grower of these products and having to put these new stickers on or finding an alternative to current plastics, that is going to increase the cost of the product to somebody who's buying it at the grocery store, correct? 
that should be the thing. Yes. Otherwise, somebody has to eat the cost of where the whole supply. Right. Somebody has to pay for it. Yeah. Somebody and it has ends to up pay being you, the Usually consumer, the at the, at the grocery store. Usually the grocery store. For all of these new regulatory changes that governments yes. propose.